Lift it up. Say, this is my Bible. This is the word of God. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. And I have what it says I have. Say, this morning, I'm about to receive this ever-living, incorruptible, infallible word of the living God. My spirit is ready. My heart is alert. I will never be the same again. Never, never, never. I will practice what I hear from this word in Jesus' name. And we all say, again, we all say, amen. Amen. Father, we are so happy and so grateful for this wonderful morning that you've given to us to come into the house of God and to us who are watching also online because of distance and because of many other things that could not make them be here for this service. And I pray this morning, even as we receive the word that you've prepared for us, that each and every one of us, Lord, will be blessed. That this word that we have received, Lord, will make us to be what it says we are. And it will cause us, dear Father, to find your perfect will in our lives. We are grateful because the word of God never never falters and it never fails. So, dear Father, as we sit back to receive from you, may your Holy Spirit be our guide and our leader. May your Holy Spirit be the revealer of the same. And may you speak to every heart that, is, that has come to this house, that none of us will leave and go back disappointed because of our being here. But that, Lord, we shall go back thanking you for the opportunity, thanking you, Lord, for the time, and thanking you, Father, for the privilege. We thank you, we give you praise, and we give you honor. Because we pray, believing that you've heard our prayer, in Jesus' name, and we all say again, amen. amen. And amen. God bless you. Be seated in his presence. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you for coming. I want to encourage us to be coming a little earlier so that we can enjoy the beautiful worship that we've enjoyed this morning. Pastor uh, uh, Makale, where is he? Together with his team, we want to thank you for leading us in worship this morning. Now, we will continue from where we left last Sunday. And uh, today I want to talk about uh, the needy, what God commands the needy in the New Testament. Very exciting. And very revealing in the New Testament. I think last Sunday, we went to the place where we we reached. We were looking at what God commanded Israel. And Israel was the people of God. Today, the people of God is the church. So when we sit together, we are sitting as Israel in the house of God. In fact, one of the things which I've discovered in the Bible, God wants us to minister more to those of the household of faith than those who are outside there. In fact, that's... Scriptural. God wants me to minister to you. If you are in need, I should minister more to those who are in the household of faith than to those who are outside there. Because Israel was a people God had prepared for himself. And he was giving them these commands which were meant to minister to his people, the Israelites. So you pick it it up from that angle and you will see how beneficial it's going to be as we look at that together. I have about 45 minutes to do this and I'm grateful I have the time to share the word of God with you. Now... Back to our scripture of reference. That is, if you can remember Deuteronomy 15, verse 7 to verse 10. Those who have not been following me, all these sermons are on YouTube. You can go to our YouTube channel and you can be able to pick them up. This is the fourth one I'm doing. I think the third one I'm doing in the series of this month's topic. That is uh, Social Outreach Month, Synergy Through Social Outreach. Okay? So you can go there and you will see what we've been sharing. I'm just coming to this. Probably I'll I'll have one more, which I'll conclude when I get the time. So our reference scripture has been Deuteronomy 15, verse 7 to verse 10, and I want us to read that together. It says, If among you one of your brothers should become poor in any of your towns within your land that the Lord your God is giving to you. This is Israel. And I, I can change that and I can put it. If one of your brothers should become poor, in any of the churches, in any of the counties, within the land that I'm giving to you, the Lord God is giving to you, or in any of the churches, GCI churches, in any of the fellowships that God is giving to us. It says, you shall not harden your heart or shut your hand against your poor brother, but you shall open your hand to him and lend him, sufficient for his need, whatever it may be. I hope I'm reading the same, same one. Eh? Whatever it may be. Then he says, take care lest there be an unworthy thought in your heart, and you say, 
And I think I explained this last Sunday. The seventh year, the year of release is near. And your eye look grudgingly on your poor brother. And you give him nothing. And he cried to the Lord against you. And you be guilty of sin. Then he gives the reason why we need to be ministers to our brothers, the needy. He says, you shall, no, he says here, you shall give him freely. And your heart shall be not grudging when you give to him. Because of this, the Lord your God will bless you in all your work and in all you undertake. Now that was a promise of God for his people. And I can tell you this promise stays even with us today. That if we can do that to those whom God has brought in our midst, beginning from our own households where we live, our communities where we come from, our churches where we attend, the communities where we operate from, then the Bible gives us a promise here. It says, the Lord will bless you in all your work and in all that you undertake. Which, in my opinion, some of the reasons why we are not blessed is because we have never known how to tap into some of these spiritual principles that we have in Scripture. Sometimes we think when we, do, we work very hard, we're going to be blessed. We don't know that. Sometimes we think when we can amass it on ourselves. And we can say, I did, I worked very hard. This way, I am the way I am. We don't realize there are principles which when you trigger them, those principles, those principles begin to work for you and for your benefit. So we saw it, how God dealt with Israel and the commandments he gave them to bring what I'm calling here as equity. And that was the end of my sermon last Sunday, I mean last Sunday in the third service, we realized that God brought Israel back to what, we, what I was calling as the original settings, the factory settings, which means that God will bring us back to the place where we will be equal. It may not matter how much rich you are or how much poor a brother is. For Israel, what the Lord would do when he, when he introduced the year of Jubilee, he was bringing them back to the original settings. If you can remember, I mentioned to you when you have a, an iPad or you have a, 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 a phone or you have anything or a TV, a smart TV, and it's giving you trouble, or there are, there are challenges in that smart TV, they normally tell you, take it back to the factory settings. Now, when you take the factory settings, you, re, you re, re, reprogram it to what it was before. Now, the factory settings of God for Israel was each one of them had something. And none of them inherited the land without anything. It means they were all equal. Those were the factory settings. The factory settings were that Israel needed not to be poor. But because with time, the Lord knew some of them, because of their indiligence, they will not be diligent enough. He understood some of them because of their corrupt and their corrupt thinking and their corrupt mind. He understood some of them because of certain circumstances in their lives beyond their control, they will be poor. They will be poor people. He said there will never lack to be a poor man among you. So he had to institute what we were looking at last Sunday. I'm just making a recap to bring you to page so that when I talk about the New Testament, you will connect. He had now to put a system in place that would bring them back to the original settings. So that even that man who is poor, at some point he'll come back to the place where he'll have what he had. Are you with me? Yes. Are you getting it? Yes. Are you getting it? Yes. Because if you don't get this, you will never, get, you'll never need to understand the meaning of ministry to the poor or to the needy. So that's why he brought in those principles which I shared with you last Sunday. And just to mention, the principle of tithe of the increase was meant to minister to the poor. We saw the principle of uh, the gleanings of the fields. It was meant to minister to the poor. We saw the principle of the sabbatical year that came after seven years, which, which, which is mentioning here. It came to minister to the poor. And then finally, back to factory settings, was the principle of the year of Jubilee, where all debts were canceled. Slaves were set free. And you are meant to go back to the land that God gave you in the beginning. If anybody occupied that land, you released it to that particular individual. And you, you went to yours. God is very fair. I think that's the God I want to serve. Now that makes me believe what I have is not mine. Everything I have is not mine. I think part of it belongs to somebody else. Tell your neighbor, your God is here. <laughs> you just enjoy it for now, but the year of Jubilee is coming. When the year of Jubilee is coming, yours will be yours. And the other brothers, it will be his. So if I were you, I would begin sharing. So that when that time comes, I will not be disappointed. That's why he was telling him, yeah, don't become grudging. Because there were some fellows, when they knew the year of Jubilee was coming, they became, they, became, they, became, they became disgruntled. And they would begin looking at their brothers and saying, now I know next year you are coming back to this land. You know, it, I took it from you, but now you are, you are taking it back. That's why the Lord was saying, do not be disgruntled, but give to him freely. And then the Lord will bless the labor of your hands and all your undertakings. Have I brought you to book? 
Now let's now go to the New Testament, all right? The New Testament is very interesting, and I'll try, ha, my, 10 minutes are already over, and I'll try to go very fast in the New Testament, okay? First, I'll begin with, with Jesus, his mission statement, his mission statement. We know the mission statement of Jesus. That mission statement is found in the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 16 to verse 21. Let's go there quickly. Luke chapter 4, 16 to 21. When the Lord was beginning his ministry, he was given a Bible. This is my Bible. He was given. He walked into the temple, and somebody went and handed over the Bible to him. It was actually, the Bible calls it a scroll, the book of Isaiah. And he went in the book, and he sought a place, opened that place, and began to read. Actually, he was declaring what his mission was on earth. He was telling the people, this is why God has sent me. When you begin seeing me tomorrow do A, B, C, D, this is my purpose. Okay? Then he began reading that mission statement. And I want us to look at that statement very, very well, and I hope they will bring it up in the version which I have given here. It tells me from verse 4, verse 16, verse 16, and he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And he was, as he, it was his custom, he entered into the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. And this is what Jesus read. He said, and I want us to look at that together. The Bible says they gave him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. Uh, could you put it in my version? The version which I've given. I don't know which version this is. Uh, he came to Nazareth. He brought him where he was brought up. I know you have all that. Where he was brought up. Okay. And they gave him. And then he took, entered the synagogue. Luke chapter 4 verse 16. Entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. Now, I want you to help me uh, to read, okay? To read. Okay. Yeah, that's the, that's the one I want. He stood up to read. Can we now go to what he read? Verse, 16, verse 17 now. Verse 17. Let's go to verse 17. Okay? And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. Let's go to verse 18. Verse 18 says this. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. This is Jesus speaking. Says it's upon me because he has anointed me. I want you to see the first, the first mention. He has anointed me to do what? To preach the gospel to who? To the poor. So underline the word poor. I want, you, I want us to look at that statement very clearly. Poor. He has sent me to do what? To heal the brokenhearted. Look at the word brokenhearted. And ask yourself, who is normally brokenhearted? Is the needy. Brokenhearted. He says, to preach deliverance to who? Captives. Who are the captives? In Kenya, who are the captives? The prisoners. Those who are in prison. Captives. He goes, and recovering of sight to who? Who are the blind? The sick. The sick. Let's keep on moving. To set at liberty them who are done what? Bruised. What does the word set at liberty mean? Deliverance. Release. Then if you finish in verse, verse 19, and to preach what? The acceptable year of the Lord. That's sabbatical and jubilee. I want you to think a bit. Just think a bit. I have in my, my own Bible, I've underlined the following. I have said to preach the gospel to the poor, I put the word they are needy. I've said he has sent me to proclaim Release to the captives, I put the word there, prisoners. I've gone for the recovery of sight to the blind, sick. And to set those who are downtrodden, the oppressed. The word downtrodden in the Old Testament, you, you will find it repeated again in all the prophets as the word oppressed. The people who nobody thinks about. Can I come into a language? Our language which Kenyans understand best. The bottom up. That's the language you can understand. If I was to write this in Kenyan language, I would say it. I would say, to do what? Help me with that scripture. That same, same scripture. What does it say? The word the oppressed are mentioned or the downtrodden. In your Bible, it says, to do what? To bring, to heal. To heal who? The bottom up. The downtrodden are where? There. The people who feel oppressed, the ones who feel like nobody cares about them. The ones who actually, when you look at, they are, they are surviving on trying to get something to eat. The ones who have no land, they have no house, they have no place. That's what Jesus is talking about here. So in my scripture here, I have said the oppressed. And to proclaim 
the favorable year of the Lord, that is liberty, the jubilee of his people. Then the Bible says he closed the scripture, handed over the scroll to the people, and Jesus went and sat down. I think he was sending a message, this is my mission. So I begin by telling you this, his mission statement, let me read what I've written here. I've said, the New Testament message of the kingdom of God focused on the poor. Much of the key words in his mission statement expressed the need to minister to the needy. The Lord didn't begin by saying, the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the rich, or to preach the gospel to the wise, or to those who are well endowed. He was very key in mentioning my mission was to bring man from the position of defeat and failure. Remember I told you, in the Garden of Eden, you were never, God never made Adam inadequate. He gave Adam literally everything that Adam needed. Adam never lacked anything in the Garden of Eden. Luck came in because of sin. And his state was moved from here to down here. This is why the Bible talks about poor in the spirit. You will see him talking about it in the Beatitudes. Adam was brought to the place where he became useless, he became needy, he became useless. Although he could have little here to enjoy and little here to have, he had already brought himself to the place of oppression. So Jesus is, is telling us, I have now come to bring you back from where you were to the position where I intended you to be. To get you back to the original settings that God intended the church to be from the beginning. Are you with me? Okay, let me move on. Because if I continue dwelling on that, my ministry will again disappear here. So the real mission of Jesus was to restore man back to his original settings. His mission statement addressed the needy and the poor, the prisoner, the sick, the oppressed, and to proclaim the liberty, the acceptable year of the Lord, which in the Jewish calendar was the year of Jubilee, where they would proclaim liberty to everyone and you would be brought back to the place where God intended you to be from the beginning. So that's number one. Number two, John the Baptist pointed G people to Jesus. You know, John the Baptist, this is now number two, eh? I'm, uh, number one, I've talked about Jesus. Number two, John the Baptist pointed people to Jesus through the ministry of the needy. I had never seen that until I began doing my study on the needy. When John began preaching the gospel, you know, John's job was basically to make, to prepare the way for Jesus. Because his message was a messenger in the wilderness crying out and saying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. He was a forerunner, someone who had come to tell the people behind me, someone is coming who will do the work that you've all, be, you've all been expecting. This is why people went to him and they say, are you the Messiah? That's why even he himself went to Jesus and requested, asked him, are you the Messiah when he was in prison? So John was simply a forerunner. But look at the message John had. When people began following John, like now when people came to church, what would Pastor Mlema preach to them? Like now when I stand here and I'm preaching to you, what am I preaching to you? Today, what I, 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 we are preaching to people is prosperity. We are preaching to people, give to the pastor. Yeah? We are telling you, come and put offerings here so that you can receive your miracle. We are telling you, connect with this puppet. That's what we are telling people. Today we are telling you, if you want to get rich, give. That's what we are telling people. Can somebody just lock that thing? Now, John the Baptist had a message, and his message was simple and clear. Very simple and clear. When the men came to John and they declared, they asked him, what must we do? After he had told them, repent, he had told them, repent and follow the Lord. Look at what John answered. In the book of Luke, chapter 3, verse 10 to verse 11. This is John the Baptist. He pointed people to Jesus through the acts of compassion. Chapter 3, verse 10 to verse 11. The Bible says, and the people asked him. They're asking John the Baptist. Are you still with me? Say, saying, what shall we do? The big question, what must I do to go to heaven? John answered in verse 11, and he said this. He answered and said to them, can you help me here? He who has two courts, let him impart to him that has none. And he that has meat, let him do what was, tell, what was John telling them? Share. Share out what you have. He was saying, listen, deliverance is coming. The Lord is bringing us back to where we were from the start. He was telling them, listen, he that is coming behind me is going to be talking and ministering to this cause. In my version that I've written here, John simply told them, he answered, say, whoever has two tunics, let him share with he who has none. And whoever has food, 
let him do likewise. He was simply bringing them to the place of compassion, to the place of ministry to the needy, which to me was the key and the core message that God had for his people. And believe me, when God looks at you, he loves your spirit more and equal to the way he loves you and your life that you are living here. You know, there are people who think the Lord loves only the spirit. So even if I, I, live, in, I, I, live, I live a very miserable life here, I'm living it mis in misery because I'm going to heaven. That's not the way God looks at life. He looks at you and your welfare, right here on earth, and your welfare up there. So the second thing is that John pointed people to the king, I mean, pointed people to Jesus through the ministry of compassion. Let's look at Jesus, Jesus' message. Jesus pointed people to the kingdom of God through, again, the acts of compassion. The first one was his mission statement, the one we read in the book of Luke. Now, John's message was compassion. Now, the message of Jesus, what was it? He pointed people to the kingdom of God through the message of companion, I mean compassion. His message was very simple. His teachings were centered on the welfare of others, not on your own welfare. Like today we think, the Lord looks at the welfare of all, all the people. And you will see this in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 42. Today I'm going to read many scriptures. Matthew 45, chapter 5, verse 42. Am I still with the people? I hope I'm still with you. Yeah, Matthew 45, chapter 5 and verse 42. What does he say? He says, give to the one who begs from you. I think the, the, the preaching of, of giving to the poor is the most difficult. I think it's more harder than me telling you give to the pastor. It's easier for me to sit here and tell you if anyone wants to, anybody wants to come and tap in my anointing. Like in the Kikwambia, give to the one who is doing what? Begging. Does it, does it really resonate? Can you see how hard that is? He says, give to the one who begs from you and do not refuse the one who would borrow from you. It means when God gives you, he doesn't give it to yourself. He gives you to share with the others. Now let me read another scripture because this one may, may sound too strong. Look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 1 to verse 4. And remember, Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7 were the Beatitudes. These were the teachings that laid the foundation for the kingdom message that Jesus was going to preach. The whole chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7. I normally say, it was like a teacher who is going to take a new class, take the class through a certain course, and is standing before the, the class and is telling the class, we will go through the following topics that will end up testing you in the exam. So Matthew 5, 6, 7, Jesus was introducing the topics of the kingdom message. This is why I'm, I'm beginning with chapter 5 and that verse. But if you go to the verse I'm going to read, he expressed, he, he Actually, within his teachings, the Beatitudes, Jesus now spoke about the need to minister to the poor proper. And read with me. Chapter, five, chapter 6, verse 1 to verse 4. 6, 1 to 4. All right? This is basic. In fact, my Bible reads, ministry to the needy and the poor. And it says this. He said, beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your father who is in heaven. And this is very true of many of us. Every time you give to somebody, you want people to know. Sinikweli, ata ile nyumba ni mimi nilimjengea. Ata hawa watoto ni mimi nilifanya nini? Niliwasomesha. Don't you hear people talking like that? Yeah, we want people to know what we have done. Because we think it's a big thing. But we hardly realize it is not a big thing. Actually, the moment you let people know what you have done, you've received your reward. Because in God, he knows what you own is not yours. It is meant for that person. It's only that you don't know. Tell your friend, Aujui. Mwambie, Aujui. Atako kagari kako kadogo si kako. Mwambie. Ajue si kake. Aya, tuendele. Nafikia hapa unasema pastor, unasema uongo ni yangu. Isawa. You have it. But listen. He goes on to say in verse 2. He says, thus. 
When you give, help me, to who? Come on, can you help me? When you give, to who? To the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by the others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. Verse 3. Verse 3. But when you give to the needy, do not let your hand know what your right hand is doing. Then verse 4. So that your givings may be in secret, and then what? Your father who sees in secret will reward you. Now listen to me. God will see when you are giving to the needy. Not men. God will see. The moment you are extending a hand to a brother in the church who has a need, heaven has already seen it. And let me tell you, don't let anybody know you have, it, you have, you have helped that brother. And heaven, the Bible says God records that. You become a debtor. And God, who is your debtor, gives it back to you immediately. The last one. And this one, no, there are two more. On Jesus. I hope I'll make it. Luke chapter 12, verse 32 to 34. Luke chapter 12, verse 32 to 34. Okay? 32 to 34. This is now Luke. And this is what Luke says. We, verse 32 to verse 34. Can we just read scripture? There's nothing wrong with that, isn't it? He says, fear not little flock. Little flock are now the believers. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Which means God has loved us to give us the kingdom that we, have, we are enjoying here. Then he says, sell. Please help me. How do you get the kingdom? He says, sell your possessions and give to who? Now, if I preach that someone here, how many of you will appreciate it? Look at your neighbor, ask him, is that really Bible? Ah, come on. Help me preach. Come on, turn to your neighbors. Mwangalio kuhuso. Sio gope, ataka umjui. Leo tamjua. Mulize hiyo ni Biblia. How many of you believe the Bible? So you said, this is my Bible. You said, I am what it says. Then you said, you can do. Now, can you do that one? <laughs> now, he says, sell your possessions and give to who? The needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old. And treasure in the heavens that does not fail. Where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. Let's go to verse, I think it goes up to verse what, 34. Verse 34. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now let me ask you, how many of you are here on earth forever? How many? Now I think when you look at yourself, you imagine you're going to live on earth. I think you imagine that. You even encourage yourself. You try your body, you hear it is nice. Then you imagine you are here for? Forever. But how many of you know you're not here forever? How many know that? How many know you are here on a lease period? And after the lease period is over, you go somewhere else. And where is it that we are going? That's the kingdom. Heaven. It means for me, eternity is not here. Eternity is there in heaven. So Jesus is teaching us principles of heaven. He's saying, the things we are doing on earth are temporary. But we are permanent things that we are going to live on and live for up there. So he's encouraging us, telling us, do not, do not keep your treasure here. Your treasure is, are the goods you have. The treasure are the monies that you have in your bank. Your treasures are the properties that you are keeping. And do not comfort yourself with the treasures you have here. But begin to imagine those treasures can also find their way in another kingdom where you will be forever. And those, the way of transferring the treasure there is not by you giving an offering here and tithe every Sunday. It's for you remembering that what you have does not belong to you and sharing it with other people. When you give to others, heaven receives it on, on their behalf and treasures it in heaven. This is why I have a very strong conviction we will not be equal in heaven. A partner, I tell you, you, you cannot just be enjoying. I love to wake up and sacrifice. I was a cani. I was a cani. Tell your friend it is impossible. Okay, we'll enter heaven. It is lined up with gold. Yes, you will be walking on the streets of. When Gina met a court, we're not going to on gold. We're not going to get it. But when Gina went to, to go down the dahab. We'll be in places where you will be looking in the window, and you see us, and you praise God in your situation. Because there's no envy in heaven. You'll just be happy to remain the way you are. 
But if you know how to treasure there, you will keep it where? There. Let's move on. The last one in this category. Then I go to my epistles. I think I'm okay. The last one, I want to emphasize because I'd mentioned to you. Now, Jesus, in chapter Matthew 25, is now almost closing his ministry. But because 26 is going to the, 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 the crucifixion is starting, 27 is being crucified, 28 is resurrecting, and the, the Bible is ending. When he's now coming to the close of his ministry, he is now revealing to us how the kingdom of God will look like. Remember, he began by telling us what his mission was. And for three years, he has done his mission. He's now at the tail end of his three years. And he's telling the people now who have, have heard him, like you and I, this is the way the kingdom of God is. He began in Matthew 25, verse 31, by saying this. And listen. He says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, when I will come again in my glory to come and receive you to myself. And every scripture in the Bible has a meaning. So he's now telling them, look, I've given you the message, you know it. I've told you what to do. But I'm going, I'll come back. But when I come in my glory, and all the angels with me, then when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. This is the end times now. Can we move on quickly? He says, before him will be done. Will, will, will be done what? Read with me. They will be done what? gathered all the nations and they will separate people one from another as sheep separates shepherd separates the sheep from the goats I think I, met, I shared this scripture in my opening remarks a few weeks ago then it says in verse and he will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left let's move on okay this one I'll not explain I'll just read then the king will say to those on his right come you who are blessed by the father Inherit the kingdom prepared for you in the foundations of the world. That is 35. And I then it says, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Continue. Huh? I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to see me. Okay? Then the Russians will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and fed you? Or thirsty and gave you drink, 20, 30, 39. And when did we see you a stranger and we welcomed you? Or naked and we clothed you? Let's continue reading. And when did we see you sick in prison and we visited you? Okay. Huh? The king will answer. And I want you to read that with me. He'll say, he'll say what? Truly, I say to you, as you did to one of the least of this, my brothers, you did it to me. To, to signify to me, these are truths which many people don't know. So blessed are you because you are hearing. There are people who are doing things they don't know. They don't know. You see somebody who is sick, you minister to him. There are people who are doing things, you see somebody who is, who, who is in trouble, you minister to him. Some of us, we go to prison we are, without, without even knowing, and we are ministering to the prisoners. We pray for the sick, support the sick, we are not even aware. And some of us think the preacher who is standing on the pulpit making a lot of noise and receiving offerings is the one going to heaven. That's not true. Because people will ask, how did we? And they say, when you went to visit me in that prison, maybe it was just a ministry like we are saying here, let's give. And somebody gives a few shillings to support someone or a children's home like we saw here last Sunday in the third service. You give it, but you're not aware that that thing is a premium for heaven. But look at the ship. And the, the, the goats, the goats now, all right? Look at the goats. Verse 41, 41 quickly. We go very fast, 41. Then I will say to those on the left, depart from me, you cast, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, okay? What is the qualification? Look at it. I, for I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. What is Jesus equating? He's, he's looking at Lazarus and he's looking at the rich man. The rich man has everything, but Lazarus has nothing. The rich man has an opportunity. He's not using it. He's not using it. Let's continue reading. I was a stranger. You did not welcome me. Naked, you did not clothe me. Sick, you, in prison, you did not visit me. Let's move on, okay? When, then they will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, in, and we did not minister to you? 45. Then I will, I will also answer. I will answer them and say, truly, help me there, truly, I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of this, 
you did not do it to me. So when you are giving to a poor man, you are giving to who? Ah, come on, I can't hear you. Let me come this side. I always forget that I have a church. Sister Carol, when you are giving to the poor man, you are giving to who? You're giving to God. We don't recognize that. When you are giving to pastor, you are not giving to God. Ukinipatia mimi ni yangu. Hiyo ina connection nyingine. Ina baraka zake zingine. Lakini ukipatia maskini, umempatia nani? Mungu. This way unasikia watu wanasema maskini wa nani? Haven't you haven't you had that one? Maskini wa Mungu. Si maskini wa Kenya kwanza. Ah maskini wa serikali. When they get it, when I was like, to say, to say, to say, to say, to say, to say, See, if you finish that verse, in verse, verse 20, 46, it says, and then I will answer, verse 46, please, 46, this word 46 says, and this will go away in eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal what? So the righteous people, are judged by their actions of compassion. They were not judged here by the sin of prostitution or the sin of lying. Here they were being judged because those sins were forgiven. Now they are being ju judged here by the acts of what? Compassion. I'll end there on Jesus and the Gospels. So let me come to the most exciting, the next 10 minutes. The most exciting is did the Christians of post-Jesus practice these things? And I can tell you, yes, they did. I'll begin with the application of this ministry in the early church. Now, the early church understood this gospel more than any other person in the history of the world. They preached the kingdom principles of social justice. That's the early church. I'm talking about the church. They understood these principles more than anybody else. Ask me how do I know that? Now look at Acts chapter 4, verse 32 to 37. That one is self-explanatory. I will read it, then you will think about it at home. Because I won't have time to explain this. Ask your neighbor, are you, are you part of the church? Just trigger your neighbor. I know some of us are maybe tired, they may be sleeping. I can see a few one or two sleeping. Very early in the morning, okay? Maybe the night wasn't a good one. Touch your neighbor, tell him, listen, are you the church? Okay, let's go there. It says, now, now, somebody say now. Now, now it says, the number of those who believed, this is the early church, were of, of what, of what? Can we read together? They were of what? One heart and soul. And no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own. But they had everything... This is what I'm telling you. This, this gospel, Ningum. I know it's very casual. Sometimes I've been doubting whether some of us will go to heaven. Because if God is going to put our standards on the standards of this man, I don't know whether we'll make it. Can you think about, uh, just think a little bit. Do you think we are going to make it? Sister Rose, will you make it? My sister Rose, my dear sister Rose there. Oaga. Look, look at the standards. Do we really, we really, Kama in your standard, utaingia kweli. Just our new Christo come away with the early church. The early church. Now let's keep reading so that we get it. It says in verse 33, with the great power, the apostles gave witness of their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord, and great grace was upon all of them. Verse 44. Please, verse 44, read with me. Verse 44. Because I want to show you it was practical. Practical. Let nobody cheat you. It was practical. He says, there was not. Help me. There was what? Can we, can we emphasize? There was what? Not what? A needy person among them, for as many as were owners of what? You can see with an S there. And what? I think you're even looking for another one in Mavok. You're even looking for another one in Jiru. You know, there are brethren who are just thinking about houses. 
you are not satisfied. You have one, but you are scheming for another. And you are scheming for ingine nakuru, ingine kakamega, ingine wapi ni saidi ya hapa. Saidi ya ninyi mnajua kule ziko. Niambie. Zingine wapi, mwambia mweza kwa yako yiko wapi. So you know what I mean? Yeah? Wapi? Cost. Uyu mjamako na moja cost. Onaona? Now he's saying here, as many as were owners of lands and houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what he had. God doesn't ask you to bring a house if you have only one. But if you have houses, he doesn't ask you to, to, to sell your land if it is one. But if you have what? Lands. Now listen. And they laid it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to each. And help me, each as what? As any had need. That's verse 35. Let's go up to verse 37. As any had need. Verse 36 says, so Joseph, Joseph, who was also called Barnabas, which means the son of encouragement, a Levite, of the native of Cyprus, that's verse what, 36, 37, sold a field that belonged to him and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' what? Feet. Now when this begins to happen in the present church, then I will know we are going to heaven. So we have to preach the gospel. So some of you come and talk and talk about Easy scriptures ni weke kando ni wahubiria zile zingine. Ah, let, let's, let's now talk. Should I be looking for scriptures which you like? Na hizi zingine ni weke kando. Or what should I do as your pastor? Yeah? Should I tell you the truth? Now if this is the standard, then we are in for it. Tell your neighbor it's a tall order. Okay, let's keep moving. So this was a practical application of that. And let me move you further by telling you this. The appointment of the appointment of the first deacons in the church was to answer to the need of the needy. The deacons were not appointed to raise money for the church building projects. They were not appointed to, to have positions of influence and power. Why were the deacons appointed? Because this ministry I'm talking about became so big, so huge that the church couldn't manage it alone. So they said, let us look for seven men, full of the Holy Ghost, anointing, and let's give them this ministry. So the ministry of the deacons was basically to receive things and distribute. Receive things and distribute. Can you imagine that ministry? Now, if that is our ministry here, how many poor people will be hanging on the gate? Can you imagine? But you know what? Now we are receiving and keeping. We are receiving and are messing on ourselves. This way, poor men, you will never find them near a church. Can I leave it at that for thinking? I know you people are looking at me very carefully because you are understanding. And I know you are taking it in. And I'm sure you will do some little application. You know, God doesn't ask you to go just, God is asking you just to begin doing a little application. And we shall tell you how we can do that application in this church. Can we move on? So that is the church, the early church. Now, the Jerusalem church because you will say this was the Jewish people in Jerusalem. When they were now appointing Paul, this point number two, when they were appointing Paul to send him to us, because Paul was an apostle to who? The Gentiles. The Gentile people had never heard the gospel. So this was the Jews. You could, somebody can comfort himself by saying this were the Jews so they understood the principles of the Moses and the law. But when they were appointing Paul, sending Paul now out to go and reach to us, now what we read in the epistles in the Bible. Look at what they told Paul. And, I'll, and this one is a point. Paul, now point number two is the church in Jerusalem at the commission of the Apostle Paul. Ja Galatians chapter two, verse nine to verse 10. I hope you are still with me. Are you still with me? Tunafundisha, nyanu la mungu. Tunafundisha nyanu la mungu. Ama ni opatili njili yetu ya semeni hallelujah, semeni hallelujah, semeni hallelujah. Rudieni, amen, amen, amen. Nichweka, nichweka ka, ka, ka scripture kamoja, nizunguke nako, alafu nikichama aliza ni wambia leteni sasa mbegu, na mtanipa. I see it on TV. But we don't dig the word of, we don't look and dig the word of, we don't want to understand the scriptures. We don't want to search the word of God and find it. Look at look. I mean, look at Galatians chapter 5. Paul is writing to the Galatians, he's telling them what his ministry was. 
And he's reporting what happened in Jerusalem when they were commissioning him, when they were anointing him and sending him out, telling him, now go to the Gentile world and preach the gospel. What did he say? He says, and when, help me here. These are the people who commissioned Paul. He says, and when James, somebody help me here. James, one of the apostles. And who? Who is Cephas there? Peter. That's Cephas. Peter. He was called Cephas. All right? And who? John. These are the chief apostles. They are now commissioning Paul. The Bible says, who seemed to be the pillars? Perceived the grace that was given to me. And they gave me the right hand of fellowship. They gave the right hand of fellowship to who? Barnabas and me. That we should go to the Gentiles and they should, and they to the circumcised. In other words, they said, you and Barnabas, we are sending you to the Gentiles. But we remain with these Israelites here. The first I want you to catch is verse 10. And please underline it. It says, only, only, the only thing they told them as they were going to preach, the only thing, very key, only, they asked us to do what? To remember who? The poor, the very thing I was eager to do. Does the message go home? So when you are commissioning people, you are telling them to do what? To go and prosper? Or you are telling them to go and minister to the poor? You see, the commission wasn't limited to preaching the gospel. The commission was as you go, don't forget the poor. Don't forget the needy. Because that is where the essence of the gospel is. Let me leave it at that. Number three. Paul's understanding of the spirit of equity. That's number three. Paul's understanding of the... Paul understood this spirit, so wherever he went, he preached that same, same spirit. And we can see this when Paul is dealing today, when Paul is actually dealing with this need now in the churches that he had begun. And one of the churches we know, a beautiful church like GCI Central, was the church of Corinth. The biggest church Paul had, the mega church he had was the church of Corinth. That's the church that had many people, big congregation. He has written two big books, First and Second Corinthians to this church. Now Paul is explaining to them about the ministry to the needy. What does he say? Look at chapter, Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12 to verse 15. These are beautiful scriptures. Second Corinthians 12, chapter 8, verse 12 to 15. I hope they are self-explanatory because I, I don't want to labor in trying to explain to you. Are you still with me? Okay. Now he says, for if the readiness is there, it is acceptable according to what a person has and not according to what he does not have. Now, God doesn't judge you with what you don't have. He judges you with what you, what you have. Let's move on. Verse 13. Verse 13. Is it 13? Yeah. For I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but that as a matter of fairness, a matter of fairness, your abundance at the present time should supply their need so that their abundance may supply your need that there may be a what? You see, God believes in equity. Equity means this, I have, you don't. What I have in abundance should supply you. Because tomorrow, you will also not have, and I will have. That's fairness. I said up to verse what? 15, we are on which verse? 15. As it is written, whoever gathered much had what? Nothing left over. And whoever gathered a little had no luck. It means when my cup is full and there is an abundance, your cup which is not full, you come and I fill with the abundance. I needed to have a glass of water to show you. There is water streaming in my glass and what little water has streamed in yours. Yours is halfway. Mine is full. And mine is still streaming in. What should I do? I should remove my glass and put your glass there. So that you who has today can bless the one who doesn't have today because tomorrow the one who has will and you, you will not have. And believe me, I have never seen somebody who is permanently, permanently in abundance. Even these fellows you see who are pretending driving the excesses, some of them are in big debt. Huge. Very huge. You see a person comforting himself with a VX. But you know what is at the back of the mind? KCB. NCBS, 
Is that CBA? Someone is living in a huge house, but behind that house, there's a huge lawn that is servicing. So you, you look at him, you say, I'm a barikiwa, aja barikiwa, uyo mjama ana stress, usikuwa lali. He's turning and turning. You, you are in a small house in pipeline, you are sleeping nicely. You wake up in the morning when your face is full of joy. This guy, may the Lord help us. Now listen to me. Here he's saying, the abundance may, I like it here, your abundance may, may be a supply to their want. And their abundance also may be a supply to your want. It was just common sense. Today you have, tomorrow you won't. And believe me, it might not be you who, you might say, Mlema mimi ni konazo ni meweka. It's not you. It is your son and your grandson who will not have. And because you have done to somebody today, someone, God will make somebody somewhere to remember your grandson. Amen. You know, you'll be seeing it from heaven. What we want to at Woni, we kumbuka yule rich man, aliona. Mjamali kuwa mbinguni anaona ndugu zake kule chini. Akasema sumutume tuyo mjamaa ayende awambie what to do. Ili hawa jamaa wasikuje hapa. It tells me you will see your grandchildren down there. When you reach heaven and you begin to experience what it would have been for you to enjoy the beauty of the treasures in heaven, you will miss it. And you will say, if I knew, oh God, if I knew. If I just knew, Lord, I would have done this for the betterment of that one who is down there for me to be where I am but it will be too late. Their abundance may be a supply to their lack. So that when they, they have abundance, they also supply to their lack. That is what we call us equity. Original settings. Tell your friend original settings. Okay. Now, I'll still five more minutes to complete this. I know my time is up. With our offerings, we are, here we are not as many as second and third service, so I can seize that opportunity to steal five minutes of yours. Can I do that? Yeah, okay. Now, number four, Paul's order to the churches. That one was simply to tell you the principle Paul applied it. But Paul also ordered, who is the, I call Paul the apostle of the Gentile church. We don't have anyone who qualifies to order us than Paul. Paul is actually the Moses of the Old Testament. In our case, Gentile, Paul is our Moses. Peter is the Moses in the in the Jewish church. I mean in the, 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 other, yeah, the Jewish church. But for us Gentiles, Paul is our Moses. And Paul is ordering. Look at, look at 1 Corinthians 16 verse 1. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 1. 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 1. Uh, is it first or second? Let me be sure here. Second, 1 Corinthians 16 verse 1. Yes, you are there. He says, as they brought, the, not Chronicles, Corinthians, my brother. We are in... Uh, New Testament, okay? Thank you. First Corinthians 16 verse 1. What does he say? Now concerning what? The collections for who? The saints as I have done what? Directed the churches of Galatians. So you also are to do. Now if Paul was standing here, he would have said, for the collections to support the needy. As I commanded the churches which I began in Asia. I'm also commanding GCI to do. If Paul stood here, if, if I invited Apostle Paul, by the way, next Sunday, he will be coming. Paul, I'm, I've invited him to be our guest minister next Sunday. Paul, Paul, Apostle Paul, he's coming from heaven to come and speak to you next Sunday. How many will be here in church next Sunday to hear Paul speak? Can I see how many of you would be here next Sunday? You don't want to, now you're no, you doubting me. That's the reason why all the hands are down. Eh? But you know who Apostle Paul will be next Sunday? Pastor Mlema. Because he has just given me the same, he's telling me, the way I preach in other churches, you preach. I've sent to you Timothy that he may remind you all that I do as I do in all churches. So he has sent Mlema to remind you as he does in all. So who is speaking? So is Paul now talking? How many of you want to hear Paul? So what is Paul telling us? He's saying what? Concerning what? The collections for the saints, as I directed the churches of Galatia, I'm also directing who? Can you say, put your name there? Directing who? To, what, to do what? To do. Okay? You may say, Mulema, that's an isolated scripture. Second Corinthians 9, verse 1 to verse 2. He continued with the message. And I'm ending on this one. Eh? This is the last one. Second Corinthians 9, verse 8 to verse 12. This is the last one, I promise you. 
9, 8 to 12. This is now Paul speaking. And he says, God is what? Able to make all grace to abound towards you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. What a scripture. What a scripture. You know, those who like praying scriptures, this, this is the way they pray. Alan, Pastor Alan, says, Father, hallelujah. Oh God, you are able to make all grace to abound towards me so that I have all sufficiency in all things and in all times that I may abound in every good work. Don't you see brothers praying like that? They even pray for you, may you have all sufficiency. May you abound in every good work. They tell you that. And you feel so nice a prayer was made. Let me tell you, it's not the prayer. It is something more than Tell your friend is more than the prayer. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on and see. Verse, verse what? Verse 9. He says, as it is written. What is, do you believe the Bible? What does it say? He has done what? Distributed freely. He has done what? Given to the poor. His righteousness endure earth forever. Now, it is pegged on this scripture. That you have given without grudging. And you have given to who? The poor, because he was talking about the ministry to the saints who are poor in Jerusalem, to the Corinthians. Let's keep reading, verse, verse 10. He who supplies seed, and we misuse this scripture, to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply the seed you are sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. This was saying, when you now give to the poor, it's like you have spread your seed of righteousness. You have sown your seed of righteousness. And when you sow that seed, two things happen. Eh? When you sow the seed, he who supply, he supplies seed to you and he gives you bread for food. It means God will never fail to feed you when you are, when you are sowing your seed properly. And then he says here, he multiplies the seed that you are sowing and increase the harvest or the fruits of your righteousness. We go to verse, verse, verse 11. You will be enriched in every way to the generous, to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. Now, if I ended here, you'll say, Pastor Mlema, you've even confused me. But let me now tell you what the, how that end is done. You go to verse 12. It says, for the ministry of what? This service. The ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but is also overflowing with many thanksgiving to God. Now you go and underline the word for the ministry of this service. Another scripture says for the administration of this service. It means when you begin to administer that service, when you understand the blessing of giving to the needy and the poor and releasing what God has given to you, it does not only supply the wants, which means your wants are guaranteed in this ministry, but it is also overwhelming with a lot of thanksgiving to who? To God. That's the meaning of those scriptures. And you can read the whole of that chapter and you will see a revelation of what I'm talking to you about. This is to signify to me, the New Testament church understood the principles of giving to the poor more than any other church. And that's why God blessed them. It was not the principle of give to me. You will never find a place where Paul is asking anybody to give to him. Never. Never. But even when they gave him like a prophetess, he, it was for his ministry, for his ministry. And Paul accepted it. He says, thank you, you've acknowledged me as the servant of God. And because you've given to me, may, the, may God, he says, I, you've not given to me because I desire a gift. You know, there are people who give to the pastor because they think pastor is desiring their gift. No, he says, you've given to me that your account may be credited. So there are people who understand how to sow. Are you getting my point? They are not sowing here so that they can receive. They are sowing for their account to be credited. It means when you are giving, God is crediting your account in heaven. So that in times of need, you can go to God in prayer and you can say, Father, my son has no school fees. I do not have a place to, to stay. And God will remember because already you have sown seed that has credited your account in heaven. Amen. I think I end my sermon there. Next time I'll talk about the benefits of giving to the needy and the poor. And remember, part of the team is the Levite. I am also included in the team of the needy and the... I've finished my sermon. Can we stand up on our feet? We pray and we leave.
I hope you've understood something, have you? How many have learned something? Lift up your hand and say, I have. And how many are saying, Lord, I'm going to practice what I have learned? Amen. Lift, up, lift those hands up and let's talk to God for a minute. Lord, we are grateful for this morning. Thank you for being gracious. Thank you for being faithful. We have come to worship you like we sing in a song. And this morning, Father, we have heard your word. And I pray that, Lord, you will not let your word leave us without having an impact over our lives. You will begin to teach us how to minister to those who are needy amongst us. Lord, if we have more than what we need, God doesn't, give it to, doesn't demand what we don't have. If we have more than what we need, Lord, help us to use the extras that we have to supply to those who don't have in our homes, in our communities, in our families, in our churches. Give us the secret of heaven, the kingdom of God, the secret of eternity, that none of us will miss on eternity because of our actions, but that Father will understand that our treasure is not on earth, our treasure is in heaven, where, Father, you've gone to prepare a place for us. And I pray if there is somebody here who has not connected with heaven, because he has not known you as Savior and Lord of his life, may this be the moment for you to bring that man or that woman to you. I commit them all into the hands of God. I pray for their peace. I pray for their salvation. I pray for their liberty. I pray for their prosperity. Because, Lord, it is pegged in this message that we have today, that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, that's what we are praying for, dear Father. So I bless your people who have heard this message. And I pray that, Father, your word will continue becoming an anchor in our lives. And uh, it will become, it become the foundation of our living. Thank you, Jesus. May you have sheep and not goats amongst us here. It may be hard, like the rich young man who came to Jesus. When Jesus told him, go and sell what you need and come and follow me. The Bible says the young man left a sad man. It may be hard for us to do this, but may the grace of God, which Paul is speaking about, be sufficient for us. Give us the grace, Lord, to begin practicing your word in bits and in pieces. Kidogo, kidogo. Until we come to know what God wants us to be and what God's, God would want us to become. Lord, we give you praise. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, we pray and we believe. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.